Hello, friends. I'm Dr. Tom Graham, and welcome to VX Live. Allow me to be nostalgic for a moment. I usually approach these talks with sophisticated audience like this, describing the historic inflection point at which we find ourselves in modern healthcare. I emphasize that the change is real and immediate, affecting players of all sizes, from the largest integrated networks to the smallest community providers. I always talk about how technology is the enabler, and as a real pioneer in innovation, I always talk about that as the margin of difference that's gonna allow us to deliver the best outcomes and experience to our patient. I chronicled a lot of this thinking in my 2016 book, Innovation in the Cleveland Clinic Way, in which I talked about how it's important to inspire and advance creative thought in every corridor of your organization. And frankly, we went on to define mission-driven innovation as improving and extending human life and creating economic opportunity for the communities we serve. Talked a lot about the line items. They are all important priorities in our healthcare landscape and it's moving from volume to value. Not looking at healthcare as just an episodic event where you show up in the emergency room or your doctor's office, but a more holistic view of health as a 24-7, 365 entity. Banking has certainly moved from these large marble column buildings to the home. Healthcare has to be doing that also. The center of the medical universe is where you live and it's on your mobile device. And then we should expect better service. Not only should we be getting better outcomes, but better experiences. So the consumerism mentality in healthcare is, should be welcome. And what does this do but create amazing amounts of data? We have to know how to filter it and reduce it to something that can help us deliver better care. And then along came 2020, the Annus Horribilis. All of us in some way have been affected, although some of us afflicted by coronavirus. Whether it is economically, socially, low morale, we've all been in some way touched by this extraordinary event. What we need to do now is rely on our innovation capacities to set us on a different trajectory, set new goals that will lift us out of this pandemic and allow us to get back on the best footing as a society. We've been taken back to a marathon's starting line, if you will. All of us are on the same footing. It's gonna be the most agile, prepared and visionary that are gonna lead and attain primacy in this new post-pandemic world. I'm not diminishing the volume to value and other components that are still priorities in healthcare. What I'm talking about is developing the tools, the muscles or characteristics that we can use to tackle these new challenges. And that's agility or nimbleness, connectivity, or said maybe a little more succinctly, partnership. I got a chance to rethink this and wrote about it in a recent article, Innovation in the Time of Coronavirus, when I really emphasize something that concerns me. Innovation is not a nice to have, it's not esoteric, it's essential. We have to think about how we're gonna innovate moving forward. So um, let's talk about that recalibration about which I spoke. I think first of all, not only have we talked about mission-driven innovation, but let's add something to that, value-based innovation. We now have to think about solving big problems for large populations, more economically, and frankly, faster. What are some of the things that are going to be most important to address? I think they're gonna be the digital patient experience, the ability for the caregiver to access and control information at the point of care, somehow finding a way to translate the amazing amount of data into decision support. Let's filter it, curate it, and get it in the hands of our caregivers so they can improve outcome and care. It comes down to also a global connectivity that patients now have in what I call the quantified self. Our devices are talking to ourselves and each other. We have to capture that. That gives us that more holistic view of the patient. And then frankly, we have to start thinking about health, not just the practice of medicine. And that is nutrition, sleep, what you're doing at your home, exercise, et cetera. And really, again, what is gonna be the lever or the catalyst that's gonna allow that? Well, it's gonna be partnership. How can we construct 
meaningful, respective, and collective success and eschew things like vendor-client relationships or competitor relationships and turn them into collaborators. I also don't wanna forget and be mindful of the importance to address health disparities and inequities. At this point, let's think about the roots of partnership and how they've been challenged recently. I kind of joke that sunshine laws have created a situation where an industry representative can't even buy a physician a bagel or give them a pen. It's a euphemism, but frankly, that's how we used to learn about new products, about new drugs, et cetera. The other thing I've seen is that formularies or supply chains are very difficult to crack these days. I'm not saying that people should be economically careless. What I'm saying is new innovations sometimes just don't have the track records or possibly might even be out of a contract cycle or more costly. And I know that scrutiny is important, but I think that we should talk about how new innovations access the product cycle. But where we can still collaborate as industry and providers is always gonna be around innovation. The co-development of creative thought, taking locks that we see and finding the keys within another organization or another industry. Partnership is important and on the minds of every leader. In this study that the Wall Street Journal and PwC did, you can see how prevalent formal types of relationships are at top of mind now for C-suite executives, with almost 80 to 90% of them thinking about how they are going to accelerate collaboration and improve their delivery of care through finding a partner. Essentially, everybody throughout the whole ecosystem, whether you're a pharmaceutical manufacturer or a rural clinic, everybody's thinking of ways in which to take information that may not be in their domain and find a partner that will allow them to elevate their game. You could probably predict where the platforms of innovation are coming, 5G being probably the most important, but things like augmented reality, 3D modeling, all the things that you see here are going to be not only fields in which innovation will be taking place, but these actually will become tools for even more innovation. In his 2007 book, Taleb introduced the concept of a black swan event, a highly improbable event occurring. It has a few characteristics. First of all, it's surprising to almost all people. It's of considerable, even global magnitude. And then frankly, when you look at it through the retrospectoscope, there's probably a little bit of an element of predictability. Will the coronavirus pandemic be a black swan event? That's gonna be debated for many, many years. But it set me thinking about how you would innovate in the event of another black swan event. I credit my colleague, Dr. Mark Smith, one of the first chief innovation officers along with me, who said, design for the extreme, but operate in the routine. Make sure our everyday capabilities are scalable and transferable. They have to be ready for even the most unbelievable change in our global healthcare landscape. Frankly, Samsung is right in the middle of this. Your capabilities, your global reach, the talent of your people, the philosophies with which you do your business, all have well positioned you for continued primacy in healthcare going forward, and that's why you make a great partner. This isn't bad news, but I'm gonna deliver it. We're all gonna be patients. This is a picture of me during my two years of hospitalization a few years ago. It's not something I take lightly because I'm here because of innovation. The innovative and unbelievable care I got pulled me through. We have to contribute and accelerate it. And like I said, I think it's through partnership. I wanna thank Samsung for this opportunity to join you at VX Live, and I wish you all the luck and health in the world.